Electronics. Electronics for living. RCA, the Radio Corporation of America. RCA Victor. Ford. Mercury. Lincoln. Ford trucks, tractors, implements, and industrial engines. The Ford Motor Company. The Ford Motor Company, RCA and RCA Victor present Producers Showcase. May 30th, 1955. Live from Hollywood, Producer Showcase brings you another outstanding cast of stars in entertainment from the works of the foremost playwrights, authors, and composers. Our stars tonight, Humphrey Bogart, Henry Fonda, Lauren Bacall, in The Petrified Forest by Robert E. Sherwood. Starring Henry Fonda as Alan Squire, Lauren Bacall as Gabby Maple, and in his initial television performance in the role he created for stage and screen, Humphrey Bogart as Duke Mantee, with Paul Hartman, Jack Warden, Richard Jekyll, Joseph Sweeney, Natalie Schaefer, and Richard Gaines. those reactionaries back east. All they do is talk about equality. In Russia, they've got it. All we got is slavery. Declaration of Independence. Nothing but a piece of paper. Listen to me, kid. In college, we had to read a lot on that cockeyed system they got in Russia. I'm here to tell you, if you were living there, you wouldn't be able to call your soul your own. Don't argue with the customers, Bose. Oh, college kid, huh? And how come in this line of opportunity, you're pumping gas in the middle of a rotten desert? There's a depression on. You ever hear of it? Sure, there's a depression on. That's what I've been trying to tell you. There's a mail, Graham. Don't say anything till I come back, boys. I don't want to miss none of the fight. Do you know why there's a depression on? Because we're not pushing ahead. We're not pioneering. In Russia, they got no depression because they're building something new. We're not building. We're repairing. Like those guys you see on the highway. Fixing wires all day. So some Wall Street broker in New York can send a telegram to some other guy in Los Angeles and tell him that he's ruined. 1930s will go down in history as the lousiest, darkest years we've ever had. Didn't I hear a car pull up? Oh, it wasn't a customer, boy. It's just Roy Greeley with the mail. Well, get out there anyhow. That's where your job is, see? Okay, boss. Look who's here to tell me that in Russia you can't call your soul your own. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, some coffee, regular. That'll be 50 cents altogether. What do you have? Hamburger special pie and coffee. Just checking it. I got one remark to pass on to you, brother. Be careful what you say about the United States of America. Look, since I wasn't talking to you, I don't see what business it is of yours in the first place. I heard you, though. I bet they heard you all the way to Phoenix. What you're talking is revolution. That isn't a very healthy occupation. How did this country get started if it wasn't by revolution? The American Revolution was fought to establish law and order. The object of your hey, dirty red uh, propaganda... Hey. Hey. Roy Greeley says they're all certain in town that Duke Mantee outfit is headed this way. Look, got the whole story in the Denver Post. Oklahoma City Massacre. Six killed, four wounded, two none expected to live. There's your law and order for you. Sheriff's got all these men out patrolling the roads. They think there's going to be some killing around here. They'll let him get away just like they did Dillinger. They got Dillinger. Dillinger and Duke Mantee, all in the same year. 
Well, 1934 is a year for this country to be proud of. If the sheriff needs help this time, the American Sons of Liberty stand ready to do him service. Duke Mantee versus the Beaver Patrol. Hey, wait a minute. I'll thank you to have a little respect for the things your father stands for. I'm as respectful as I know how. If you Bolsheviks would quit preaching disrespect for law and order, it wouldn't be possible for criminals like Duke Mantee to Dragon be... Dragon individualism, run. that's all we've got. Every man for himself. In Russia, they work for the people. They're pioneering. Well, my friend, when you talk about pioneering, you're talking about something I can give you a few pointers about. 50 cents. I come down into this desert in the year of 1878. 56 years ago, I helped string the first line runs well out of Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, General Lee Wallace, there, yes. he dictated the first message we sent over that line. God save the Republic. Yeah, well, you better have him send it through again, Pop, because the old Republic's in need of assistance. If that's your reach, here's your change. I kindly get out. Okay, Mr. Tenon, patriot. Only I like to be around when the shooting starts. I'd like to see you when you join the mob instead of waving a red flag. There'll come a day, mark my words, when his kind will be outlawed just like your Duke Mantee. Oh, tend to your own business, son. You're gonna make a fool of yourself. My own business. That's a fine thing to say to me. Hey, you, Paul! Come out here and throw off this table. What kind of a business have I got? Miserable service station. Well, maybe it's all you're good for. What chance did I have, ever have to prove what I was good for? Well, you had a war, didn't you? Biggest one yet. Yeah. And you think I failed just because Wilson didn't personally pin a medal on me. Well, maybe you'll do better next time, Jason. Although, don't look like there'll be no more wars. If we can believe what they're saying in those conference tables over there in Geneva. They're all getting too dang civilized. Spend more time hunting down punks like that Duke Mantee having a real war. Hey, Jason, uh... Have you seen his picture? Got engine blood, that one. Why don't we sell this place, Gramps? I'm hanging on to this place. You know you can get 7,000 for it. Maybe nine or 10. Why would anybody pay that much? Because they're gonna put that bus route through here to El Paso. This spot will be a gold mine. Then I'm hanging on to this place. But with 7,000, I could buy part of an auto camp in Los Angeles. I could put in a barbecue Los service. Los Angeles for crying down a well. You want to go to Los Angeles, your daughter wants to go to Europe. Ain't there nobody around here that's satisfied to stay put? Were you ever satisfied to stay put until you got too old you didn't have enough energy left to move? Now you see here, my son, in my day we had places to go. I come down here from Virginia City. I gotta get we... dressed. Where you going? Liberty meeting. Los Angeles. Slow down, trial, so we can see what that sign says. Black Mesa Barbecue, 10 miles. Yeah, that's the place. We gotta stop there, Duke. You gotta wait for the others to catch up. Uh, we're risking all our necks for that lousy boy. Shut up. The gas is getting low, boss. We can't stop till we get there. Don't step on it, Piles. Take it easy, Piles. That's crazy, Duke. They're probably patrolling the roads. Well, then try to act like a bunch of tourists instead of a bunch of scared rats. We can't get there till after dark, so we'll just cruise along real slow and look at the scenery. Like me, honey, sweet? No, not very much. Okay, I'll forgive you. Seeing as how I've only been here a little while, I haven't had much chance to go into my act. Hey, what are you reading? You wouldn't like it. Well, how do you know how I feel about things? Why do you wear that locket around your neck? Locket? Makes you look like a sissy. You know, I've been waiting for you to notice that. It was my father's watch chain. Yeah, my mother gave it to me when I graduated. I wish you could meet my mother. She lives in Grants Pass, Oregon. 
She could tell you some pretty nice things about me. Hey, see what's on the other end of it? Gold football. It's solid gold. Yep, got that for intercepting a pass, running 68 yards for a touchdown. What school did you go to? Nevada Tech. And if I'd gone to Minnesota or Pennsylvania or those big clubs, I probably would have made All-Americans, too. Here. Okay, let me show you something else. It's from Sid Ziff's column in Los Angeles Herald. Hey, see what he says? Tip to the pigskin fraternity. When pondering over your All-American selections in the current Anno Domini, just mull over the name of Bowles Hertzlinger of Nevada Tech. Playing with an admittedly minor league club, protected by interference of cellophane strength, Hurt Singer managed to remind some of us of the old, the old Illinois Phantom himself. <laughs> you know who the Illinois Phantom was? Uh-uh. Red Grange. <laughs> yep. It's only a sample of the kind of notices I got. I could show you a dozen more, just like it. You think a lot of yourself, don't you? Well, who wouldn't in my position, huh? <laughs> Where do you go now, Gabby? Get out the car. Right. Uh, right. Hope you don't have to shoot any gangsters in that uniform. You're the best target I ever saw. I'll be home about 10 o'clock. Don't forget to light the neon sign when it gets dark. Here comes a customer. Look busy. Good evening. Good evening. What can I do for you? Well, I'd like to rest here a moment, if I may. Sure. You live around here? No, my last host of the road reached his own ranch about five miles back. He didn't ask me in. Where am I? This place is called Black Mesa. Oh, yes, Black Mesa Barbecue. I've been seeing your signs all down the highway. <laughs> Dad says you have to advertise these days. And it's very tantalizing. I also enjoy the Burma Shave signs. Pity all the mighty Caesars who pulled each whisker out with tweezers. Where is Black Mesa? In relation to other places? Nowhere. That must be why I stopped. Nowhere's always had a fatal attraction to me. Where were you planning to go? Oh, well, my plans have been rather uncertain. I had a vague idea I'd like to see the Pacific Ocean. And perhaps drown in it. What's a barbecue? Hamburger sandwich with vegetables on the side. I think I'll have one. Okay, come on in. It's been quite a while since I... How about a beer with it? Nothing like beer on a hot day. None of your 3.2 stuff, either. Sounds fine. All oh, scared death, them killers are coming here. Don't know who gave her that idea. Show this gentleman where to wash up, will you, Graham? Sure thing, my friend. Uh, you want to see a picture of that Duke man, T? Sex killed. Did he do all that? Him and his friends did when they sprung him from the law. He doesn't look very vicious, does he? Well, I'll tell you. You can't tell a killer from his picture except by his chin. That's the funny thing about a killer. He uh, always holds his chin in. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? I don't believe I've ever seen a killer. Oh, <laughs> I have. Plenty of them. Billy the Kid once took a couple of shots at me. Well, I congratulate you on still being with us. Well, it was kind of dark. He'd had a few drinks. Besides, I don't think it really meant do me any real harm. Just wanted to scare the pants off me. Did he do it? No. I see he was just having some fun, so I said to him, I said, Kid, you're drunk. And he said, what makes you think that? He was all kind of soft-spoken. And I said, because you missed me. Well, sir, he had to laugh. <laughs> I'm about the only one he ever missed. What line of work are you in, friend? Oh, nothing at the moment. I have been at times a writer. Oh, oh, I've known some of the greatest writers ever lived. Ever hear of uh, Sam Clemens? Well, let me see. Ever hear of Mark Twain? Oh, yes. Same fella. Really? Yes, sir. I knowed him when I was a boy up in Virginia City. He used to write comical pieces for the paper there, the Enterprise. He was the best liar I ever seen, <laughs> and I've seen plenty of them. He said he used to do his writing on the principle that his heroes wanted nothing but jokes, you see, and that's what he gave him. Oh, General Lou Wallace, he's another one I know. He was governor of this territory when I first came down here. He wrote Ben-Hur right there in the palace of Santa Fe. <laughs> Kind of stuff you read, huh? 
Pash poetry. Pretty nosy, aren't you? The shapely, slender shoulders, small. Long arms, hands wrought in glorious... Don't one. make fun of it, Bose. Well, who's making fun of it? I like it. <laughs> well, it gives me a whole new picture of it. What kind of picture? Well, up to now, I thought you were just holding out because you didn't know what it was all about. It takes two to make a radio program, you know. No, I suppose you think you've got a program coming in. You bet. Your name ain't Mr. Nandy, either. <laughs> hey, reading stuff like that. Well, you've just been waiting for a guy like me to come along. You better get back outside, Bose. You know Dad doesn't like you in here. Oh, well, he's gone to town. Get the whole evening to myself. We sent that message all the way to Washington to President Hayes. General Lou Wallace, he told us what to say, and he was a great writer. Are you a famous writer, my friend? No. Come get your supper, Grant. What's your name? Alan Squire. Well, whether you're famous or not, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Squire. I'm pleased to meet you, too, sir. Thank you, sir. Beg your pardon. I didn't mean. It's all right. You like Francois Villon? It gets the stink of gasoline and hamburger out of my system. You want some coffee? A little mix with beer? Coffee will mix with anything. Did I hear Gramps say you're a writer? Yes. I haven't met many writers, except Sidney Wenzel. Ever hear of him? It's not Mark Twain, is it? No. Sidney Wenzel. He's with Warner Brothers. He stopped here once on his way to the coast. He said I ought to go to Hollywood and to be sure and look him up, but they never mean it. You'd like to go to Hollywood? Not especially. I thought all beautiful young girls wanted to be another Jean Harlow. Not me. I want to go to Bourges. Where? Bourges, in France. I was born there. But you're not French. Partly. My mother's still there. Dad brought us back here in 1918, but she couldn't stand it. The desert just got her down, and can't blame her for that. So she just packed up and went back to Bourges. We've never seen her since. She used to send me a book every year for my birthday. But they were all in French and I couldn't read them. So last year I wrote her and asked her if she'd mind sending me one in English. And she sent me this one. Here, look what she wrote in it. A ma chère petite Gabrielle. That means to my dear little Gabrielle. She gave me that name. It's about the only French thing I've got. Gabrielle. That's a beautiful name. Wouldn't you know it'd get changed into Gabby by these ignorant jerks around here. This is a picture of her. That was just before she married Dad. She had a picture taken smelling a rose. Oh, she's lovely. I can see the resemblance. I'd sure like to see her again. They got a cathedral in Borgs. Well, I guess I bothered you enough. I'll be right outside when you're ready for dessert. Gabrielle? Would you like to read me one of those poems? You mean out loud? Yes. All right. I'll read you the one I like best. He wrote it about a friend of his who was getting married. At daybreak, when the falcon claps his wings, no whip for grief, but noble heart held high. With loud, glad noise, he stirs himself and springs, and takes his meat and toward his lure draws nigh. Such good I wish you, yea, and heartily. I'm fired with hope of true love's meed to get. Knowing love writes it in his book, for why? This is the end for which we twain are met. Did you ever see a falcon? Yes. Well, not very pleasant, like a hawk. Go on, Gabriel. Mine own heart's lady with no gainsayings, you shall be always till I die. And in my right against all bitter things, sweet laurel with fresh rose its force shall try. Seeing reason wills not that I cast love by, nor here with reason shall I chide and fret. Nor cease to serve, but serve more constantly. This is the end for which we twain are met. Well, that's 
You know, that's wonderful stuff. That's where the French people are. They can understand everything. Like life, love, and death. And they can laugh at it or enjoy it, depending on how they feel. And that's why you want to go to France for understanding. Oh, I will go there. When Gramp dies, we can sell this place. Dad's going to take his share and move to Los Angeles. But I'm going to spend my part of the money on a trip to Bourg's. Where there's something beautiful to look at. And wine and dancing in the streets. If I were you, I'd stay here, Gabrielle, and avoid disappointment. I've been to France. In the war? No, I missed that, but I lived there for eight years through 17 changes of government. What were you doing, writing books? No, planning to write books. You know what a gigolo is? You danced with women for money? No, I was never a good enough dancer for that. I'm married. But don't think too ill of me. I once actually wrote a book. Was it fiction? In a sense. It was about the bleak, glacier-stripped hills of my native New England. I was 22 when I wrote it, and it was very, very stark. So it's slightly over 600 copies. Cost the publisher quite a lot of money. It also cost him his wife. She divorced him, married me. She saw in me a major artist, profound but inarticulate. She believed all I needed was background, and she gave it to me, complete with southern exposure and a fine view of the Mediterranean. That was considered the thing to do in the period following F. Scott Fitzgerald. For eight years, I reclined there on the Riviera on my background, waiting for the major artist to step forth and say something of enduring importance. He preferred to remain inarticulate. And you've left your wife now? At her suggestion, she's taken up with a Brazilian painter, also a major artist. So I decided to set forth and discover America. And I've gone thus far on my journey thanks to the power of the thumb. What were you looking for? Oh, that's rather hard to say. I suppose I've been looking for something to believe in. I've been hoping to find something worth living for and dying for. What have you found? Nothing so interesting as an old man who's been shot at by Billy the Kid. And a fair young lady who reads Villon. That's not all I can do. I wouldn't tell this to everybody, but you, well, uh, you're kind of... Oh, I'm kind of nobody. What is it, Gabrielle? I paint pictures. Are they any good? No, but I paint them. Can I see them? Okay, come on. Where are we going? Back to my room. Oh, can't you bring the paintings out here? Oh, now, Bose, if someone would see them, no thanks. You know anything about us? Well, I studied the whole cycle, right from El Greco to Vernon Jones, back to El Greco again. They're terrible, aren't they? Well, certainly no critic could condemn you for being photographic. What made you paint in this strange manner? It's just the way I feel. Are they any good? Well, I tell you, Gabrielle, I can't say, but... I'm tremendously impressed, but also somewhat bewildered. I'll bet I could improve if I could get to France. What's it like there? Well, it's rather hard to make a sweeping judgment. I've always imagined the people would be gay and reckless and poetic. I don't think there are any of those things. Especially not reckless. Go ahead, lie down. Maybe I know them better than you do because it's in my blood. Sometimes I feel as if I'm sparkling all over and I want to do something absolutely crazy. And then the American part of me speaks up and spoils everything. Makes me go to work and figure out a lot of dull accounts. You keep the accounts correctly? Well, if I didn't, this place would go bankrupt. And that's the French part of you. The sparkle must be 100% American. Would you like to marry a Frenchman? I don't want to marry anybody. How about the stalwart youth in the football jersey? He doesn't want to marry me, that's for sure. What do you think I ought to do about him? Oh, don't ask me, Gabrielle. 
That your French blood guides you. It's infallible in matters like that. I don't know anything. Well, you've got brains. Yes, brains without purpose. Noise without sound, shape without substance. I belong to a vanishing race, the intellectuals. Do you ever read The Hollow Men? Mm -mm. Don't. It's discouraging because it's true. It refers to the intellectuals who thought they'd conquered nature. They dammed it up, used its waters to irrigate the wastelands, built streamlined monstrosities to penetrate its resistance. They wrapped it up in cellophane, sold it in the drugstores. They were so certain they had it subdued. And now, you know what's causing world chaos? No. I'm probably the only man who can tell you. It's nature hitting back. Not with the old weapons. Floods, plagues, holocausts, we can neutralize them. She's striking back with strange instruments called neuroses. She's deliberately afflicting mankind with the jitters. Nature's proving she can't be beaten, not by the likes of us. She's taking the world away from the intellectuals, giving it back to the apes. Forgive me, Gabrielle. I can't tell you what a luxury it is to be comfortable and have somebody to talk to at the same time. But don't listen to me. I was born at the turn of the century, too, too soon for the war, too late for the revolution. But you're a war baby. You might easily be one of nature's own children, therefore able to understand her, laugh at her, or enjoy her, depending upon how you feel. You're the only one who can say whether or not you should yield to the orders of number 42 out there, or anyone else for that matter. You know, you talk like a damn fool. No wonder your wife kicked you out. No wonder she fell for you in the first place. I hate to, but... You're going now? Yes, and I shall continue either until I drop or Major Otter steps forth to announce his message to posterity. What did you say your name was? Alan Squire. Where are you going, Alan? Well, it depends on where that road leads. It leads to the petrified forest. What's that? Just a lot of dead old trees in the desert. Petrified forest. A suitable haven for me. Perhaps that's my destiny, to make an interesting fossil for future study. Homo semi-Americanus, a specimen of the in-between age. I was just thinking, I'd like to go to France with you. No, oh, no, Gabrielle, I could never retrace my footsteps. You mean you haven't enough money? Even that's an understatement. Well, I haven't enough either yet, but... I can do this as well as you can. You reach a point on the Atlantic coast where even that gesture would be unavailing. I'll have enough someday. You're a share of this property? More than that. Do you know how much Grandpa sold it away in the bank at Santa Fe? $22,000. He had every cent of it in gold and silver and safety vaults. We didn't even know about it till the government passed a law against hoarding and they printed his name in the papers. It's in Liberty Bonds now and it's all real to me. I guess we could travel pretty far on that, couldn't we? That's a startling proposal, Gabrielle. We'd have to wait, maybe years. But I could have bows fired and give you the job tending the gas station. Would you really like me for a companion? I know I would. And I don't make mistakes. Wouldn't you like to be loved by me? Yes, I should like to be loved by you, Gabrielle. Then why don't we at least make a start at it? You haven't anything else to do. No, well, that's just it. You couldn't live very long with a man who had nothing else to do but worship you. That's a dull kind of love, Gabrielle. The kind that makes people old too soon. It's getting dark. Would you do me a great favor before I go? Would 
you mind very much if I kiss you goodbye? No, I wouldn't mind. So, that's what's been going on in here, huh? You're necking. Hey, who are you? Lay off him, Bose. Just because she's cute and sweet, you thought you could get fresh, huh? What a nervous son. He wasn't getting fresh. Just wanted to kiss me goodbye. Get back to work, or I'll tell Dad what you were Your talking. dad'll thank me for protecting you while he was gone. Now look, pay your check and get out, huh? Oh, yes, the check. How much do I owe? Twenty-five cents. That only eight? Yes, yeah, shut up. Well, that's very reasonable, but it brings us to another embarrassment. I don't have twenty-five cents. I don't have anything. Well, what are you going to do about it? I haven't the remotest idea. Yeah, well, I have. Go on, Alan, beat it. I'll just give you a little head start, huh? Oh, uh, where's the ladies' room, please? Put that door over there. Thank you. Is there an attendant around? We want 15 gallons and a quart of oil. All right. Right away. What kind of cigars have you? Admiration, White Owl, and Texas Dandies. How much are the Texas Dandies? Three for a dime. Let me have an admiration. Wait a minute, Alan. Come far? Yes, we've driven from Dayton, Ohio. We're on our way to Santa Barbara for the winter. Lost a great deal of time there as I wanted Mrs. Chisholm to see the Gila Cliff dwellings. She was rather disappointed. How far is the Phoenix Biltmore? A good 200 miles. Uh, we'll make it by midnight. What kind of car are you driving? Duesenberg. Would you have room for another passenger? Who is it? This friend of mine, Mr. Squire. He's on his way to the coast and he hasn't got a car just now. He's an author. Luggage? Just this, sir, on my back. What's in it? Shirt, socks, underwear, toothbrush, insurance policy, passport, a copy of Modern Man in Search of a Soul by Dr. Jung. Let me see the passport. I can't be too careful these days. Oh. All right, Mr. Squire. Glad to have you with us. You can spell me on the driving. Thank you, Mr. Chisholm. And thank you, Miss... Maple. Miss Maple. I'll remember your kindness. I forgot to give you a change. No, I wanted you to keep that. Read the sign. I can't very well pretend Perhaps that Mr. I... Chisholm will take you all the way to the coast. When you get there, send me a postcard with a view of the Pacific Ocean. I like the sea. Come along, Mr. Squire. Uh, tell my wife I'm waiting for her, as usual. I suppose I'll never see you again. No. That's the way it is in a gas station. They come and go. Somehow or other, I'll... I'll repay the dollar. I don't know when. Perhaps we'll run into each other someday in Borgs. Bye, Gabrielle. Bye, Alan. Hey, Gabby. How about letting your poor, weary old grandfather have a little drink now, huh? You can have one before you go to bed. That's all. I thought things had changed on the end of the Prohibition, but it's just the same. Well, I might as well go to bed now. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing happens anymore. And it's empty, all right. I told you we were getting low, boss. How far is it to Black Mesa? Not more than a mile. Duke, there's a car coming down the road. Sounds yeah. like one of them big foreign jobs. Stop that for us. One of them big foreign jobs, huh, Duke? We're getting up in the world. Here she comes.
put pity on that panhandler. Slipped him a dime. You did? He tried to. But he wouldn't take it. He said, I don't deserve your kindness, and he handed it back. Well, that's the funny thing about a guy like that. He think nothing to hold you up for a meal, but when it comes to taking money, when they suddenly discover they got a little pride. I appreciate that very much, Rose. Appreciate what, honey? You wanted to help him. That was very kind. Say, you know, you sound as if you were nuts about that guy. I'm not nuts about him. But now and then you see someone that's just a natural object of charity. Yeah? If you appreciate it so much, well, how about being a little nice to me for a change, eh? I'd like to be nice to you. I'd like to be nice to everybody. Hey, Gabby. Look, why don't we go for a little walk around the Mesa, huh? It's nice and warm, and the moon's coming up. How about it, sweetheart? Supposing a car came along wanting something. Ah, uh, you know there's never any traffic this time of night. Well, supposing someone did come. Well, supposing they did, so what? In a pinch, the old man and that Mexican woman could take care of him. You know how your grandfather is. He wouldn't think anything peculiar if we went for a little walk. Hey, look, Gabby. Yeah. Not so bad. Just a big guy with a, with a warm heart. Come on, sweetheart. Do you know what he said? He said we'd been trying to fight nature, and we thought we'd licked it, because we'd built a lot of dams and cellophane and things like that. But that's where we're wrong, and that's what's the matter with everybody. We've got to admit that nature can't be beaten. Sure. Sure. Listen, that, well, that nature, that's, that's the greatest thing in the world, honey sweet. All right, Bose. I'll go for a walk with you. Me? Yeah. Sure. Why not? You're a beautiful kid, Gabby. There's a car coming. Well, I'll get rid of them fast. It's them. Oh. Those people, it's their car. Alan's coming back. All right, you two, inside. Get moving. What is it? Just behave yourself. No money. Get hurt. Move, Red. Come on, Look. sister. Get inside. Stand over there. You ain't a man buster. Get over there. Any guns on you? Let's keep the hands up, 42. Okay, Jackie. Who's the boss here? He's out. This is Duke Manti, folks. He's the world-famous killer. And he's hungry. What's in there? And in there? That's the kitchen, and then there's our bedrooms. You two married? No, he just works here. Anybody else here? An old man and a My grandfather's in there with a the cook. There's no one in there. Bring him in, Jackie. Okay, dude. Back the car into the shadows and stay with it. Do I get to eat? You'll eat. Don't hit that horn unless somebody comes along that really looks like trouble. Then hit it plenty. Ruby, push that table over there down in the corner. Keep him up. How did you get that car? Collapse it. What happened to the people in that car? Take a look around in there. How long are we going to stay here, Duke? Until they get here. I don't like all them big windows. Get out. You. Sit down there. Football player, eh? Yeah. You better not let me get too close, Gee. I'll take a sock at you. I used to be quite a fan. What's your school? Nevada Tech. Never heard of it. Right, come on, sister. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Don't shoot me, mister. Don't kill me, mister. Quiet, will you? Quiet, will you? Quiet, you? We ain't gonna hurt you. All we're gonna do is ask you to cook something for us. You wouldn't mind doing that, would you, Pepe? No, mister, I saw it. Right, I took it easy. Sure, right. Quiet, quiet. Well, we got that settled. So, you're the killer, huh? You're Duke Manti, huh? Would you mind sitting down there, Pop? Yes, sir, Pop. That's the greatest killer alive today. Did you hear what happened in Oklahoma City? Yeah, I heard. You pulled off a massacre. Who said it was a massacre? Denver Post. Well, let me see. Hey, you pick. Well, see how many we killed? Six killed, four wounded. Yeah, that Duke killed six and wounded four. You got any steak, sister? Only hamburger. And we've got chicken. All right, cook the chicken and four hamburgers with plenty of onions. Go with it, Jackie. Come on, Peter. And while the chicken's in the oven, uh, you and me will have a little fun, huh? Come on. Bring us beer for the bunch, sister. You fellas like to join us? Never touch it. I guess I'll have whiskey. No, none to you, Grant. She says can't have even a little one. Let him have it, sister. Well... Sure is good to have a killer around here again. <laughs> Nobody in there, boss. There's a good window at the end of the hall with a four-foot drop to the ground right where the car is. Bandits around here. Oh. They stopped us down the road and took the car. Oh. So we meet again. Sit down, pal, down there. Thanks, I'd be delighted. Wait a minute. Join 
Dennis, and a glass of beer. Thank you, but might I have whiskey instead? Certainly. Give it to him, sister. Now, how about turning on that radio? That's Duke Man T. We were looking at his picture, remember? Yes, I remember. What to tell you? Look at that chin. <laughs> the sheriff finds out he's here, we'll see some real killing. The cops ain't likely to catch up with us, at least not for a while. So we can all be quiet and peaceable and have a few beers together and listen to the music. And don't let anybody make any wrong moves. But I may as well tell you folks that old Ruby there with a the machine gun, he's pretty nervous and jumpy. And he's got the itch between his fingers. So let's everybody stay where they are. Let there be killing. All evening long, I've had a feeling of destiny closing in. Do you believe in astrology? I couldn't say, pal. I don't normally, but just now I was walking along that road, I began to feel the enchantment of this desert. I looked up at the sky, the stars seemed to be reproving me, mocking me. They were pointing to the way to that gleaming sign and saying, there's the end of your tether. You thought you could escape it and skip off to the Phoenix Biltmore, but we know better. That's what the stars told me, and perhaps they know that carnage is imminent, and I am due to be among the fallen. It's a fascinating thought. Let's skip it. Happy days. <laughs> Take a sick shooter and you file down the trigger catch so the hammer work free. Then you fan it like this. Wild Bill Hickok, he knocked over five men there at the bar. They're all on line lined up there at the bar. <laughs> Tell them about the time you took a shot at Billy the Kid, Mr. Maple. Oh, I never took no shot at Billy the Kid. <laughs> I had too much sense. Although, I did take a shot at uh, old Andy Anderson once. He was a strange character. He didn't kill for business reasons, like you fellas. He killed just for fun. He'd stick an old Johnny Reb with his bayonet, toss him over his shoulder, and then he'd stick another Johnny Reb with his bayonet and toss hey, him over his shoulder. Would you mind cutting out all that talk about blood? We're trying to eat, okay? What's the matter? You got on your conscience? My what? Yeah, I thought so. Punk kid like you hasn't got any more conscience than a coyote. Well, listen to the halfback. How much they pay you for playing a game? Look, I worked my way through college. Oh, yeah, and what were you doing? Selling subscriptions to the American boy? I worked for three years in a student laundry. Oh, how nice. Wait a minute, smart guy. I'll show Take you. Take a hand out of your pocket. Just gonna show him a news clipping that said I should have made all American. What's the matter? Did I scare you? I thought so. They're all yellow. I'd be a little tactful, Bose. Remember, they're your guests. Yeah, they're a bunch of yellow dogs. That's what made them turn crooked in the first place. No, no. Cowardice isn't the cause of crime. It has something to do with glands. You still haven't got the guts to face the bigger problems of life. Got to fight their way with guns instead of principles. You get over to the other side of that room, halfback. Come on, get up! You gonna kill him? It's just what I said. You know what I told you. You're taking this much too seriously. Yeah, I'm not afraid to die. It's a good thing for you, you're not. Step up that radio, sister. Greatest manhunt in history. A monster dragnet has been cast over the Duke, you heard what he said to me. Sit down. To the Pacific Coast in a determined effort to apprehend the members of the notorious Man C Gang. To bring to justice this fierce, colorful band of murderers, kidnappers, bank robbers, perpetrators of the shocking massacre in Oklahoma City. The gang made its escape in two cars, one of which contained Man C and three other men, the other car containing three men and one woman. The Man T car was seen early this morning at Tula Rosa and later at Hillsboro in New Mexico. The second car was positively identified at Esteline in the Texas Panhandle when it stopped at a local police station, held it up, and departed with a large supply of guns and ammunition. Well, the boys Both made it. I didn't think they could have a door in a car. The border, but it is considered certain they haven't reached it due to the number and vigilance of the patrols. And now the scores of the leading football games of the day. Van Turn Hill it off, 20, sister. Tennessee 6. Amherst 7. Bring me a cigar. We got Admiration Whitehall and Texas Dandies. Whatever cost the most. Hey, Duke. Where you going? Take us out the pots. What'd you do with a Mexican? Try to rest. Get back in there. 
Ruby, take that food out the piles and stay with him. Keep each other awake. Duke, when are we going to lamb out of here? When it's time. Sure. As soon as Duke connects with that heavy date. I don't like that dame stuff. I want to keep out of range. Bring me a road map, sister. You fellas going to spend the night here? Can't say, Pop. Maybe we'll decide to get buried here. You better come with me, Duke. I'm planning to be buried in the petrified forest. I've been evolving a theory about that that would interest you. It's the graveyard of the civilization that's been shot from under us. The world of outmoded ideas. Platonism, patriotism, Christianity, romance, the economics of Adam Smith. There are just so many dead stumps in the desert. That's where I belong, and so do you, Duke. For you're the last great apostle of rugged individualism. Aren't you? Maybe you're right, pal. I'm eternally right. But what use do I make of it? I couldn't say. I think I'm about ready for another drink, Gabriel. Uh, listen, Panhandler, who told you you could call her by her first name? Oh, please, Bose, you and I must be friends as long as they'll let us. How do you think you're going to pay for all that liquor you've been drinking? I can pay and will pay, Bose. I have a dollar. Oh, you have? So you were holding out on us before? Oh, no, I've acquired it since then. Where'd you get it? Probably those rich people gave it to him. Lay off, Bose. So, you refuse my dime, you accept their dollar, huh? Well, your pride has its price, doesn't it? I'll tell you the extent of my pride. Gabrielle gave me the dollar. What you did? It's none of your lousy business what I do. Boy, you're feeling pretty generous tonight, weren't you? Giving him money, kissing him goodbye. You wonder how she was kissing me before those rats showed up? Wasn't any goodbye kiss, I'll tell you that. Speaking of rats, of all the low duty no, sticking no, rats I've ever... Don't hold anything that Bo says now against him. He's a man of muscle. He's suffering from the pangs of frustration. I say you're a low slum. Me, yeah. What do you mean telling them a thing? Look, like I'm that? sorry, honey sweet. These guys got me half crazy with those machine guns and shotguns staring me in the face. Now look, Gabby, please forgive me. No, never. I sympathize with you utterly, Bose. Do you ever read All Quiet on the Western Front? We're all of us here tonight suffering under very much the same tension. You better have a drink, old man. Look, Gabby, I... I love you. I know you think I'm just a big lout, but... Well, I love you, sweetheart. I know that now. Now look, please forgive me, will you? Excuse me, would you rather I let... Stay where you are. But I'm intruding. Sit down, pal. Keep talking, halfback. You're going good. Gabby, if I thought I'd done anything to hurt you, I'd go over and hang on to that guy and I'd die for it gladly. <laughs> Look, you don't know what it is to be really crazy about somebody. For all you know, maybe I do. Yeah? Who are you ever crazy about? Is it any of your business? Yeah, everything about you is my business. Well, if you've got to know, it's him. What? I love you, Alan. I don't think I'll ever love anybody else. Can I possibly be drunk? You will be if you keep hitting that rye. Well, how'd you get that way, Gabby? You never saw him before. He walked know. into... Just something. After you left, Alan, I... I felt as if something had been taken out of me, or sort of as if I'd come out of a dream. I caught on to myself, and... I knew I'm just another desert rat, and I'll never be anything else. I'd better get rid of all that girlish bunk that was in me, like... like thinking so much about going to France, and art, and dancing in the streets. I'd better make the most of what I can find right here. It happened to be you, Bose. And Duke Monty came in. Oh, I'm sorry, sister. I don't like to interfere with anybody's fun. But when I take a look at the halfback, I think maybe I'd done you a favor. Maybe I will take a drink of that stuff. I'm sorry now I came back. I went out before, it was the poignant ending of an idyllic interlude. Now that's spoiled. I can't go forth quite so gracefully again. Sorry you heard the truth. I'm the type of person to whom the truth is distasteful. That wife of yours must have been terrible. Why do you think that? Because she's talked all the heart out of you. I could put it back, Alan. No, Gabrielle, don't de delude yourself. If you have love and don't know what to do with it, why don't you lavish it on Duke Mantee? There's your real mate, another child of nature. You better lay off that rye, pal. It's not the rye, it's the same disease as afflicting bows. 
impotence. Sit down. What do you care whether I sit or stand? How can I possibly assail your superiority? I got to think about my health, pal. If I had a machine gun, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I want to talk to the old man. You can talk sitting down. I heard you doing it. Very well. May I? What's on your mind? Those Liberty Bonds buried in Santa Fe. How'd you know about them? What are you going to do with them? Well, leave them right where they are. Yeah, right where they are. While your granddaughter is stifling, suffocating in this desert. When a few of your thousands would give her a chance at her birthright. Yeah, give you a chance to steal it, huh? That's a low way to justify your stinginess. I know you were a pioneer once, but what are you now? A mean old miser hanging on to that money as though it meant something. Why don't you die and do the world some good? He must be drunk. Yeah. Drunk or just about the lowest grade louse I ever run across. Talking to an old man like that. Duke, if you had any Robin Hood and you, you'd go to Santa Fe and rob that bank and give it to her before it's too late. Alan! Sit down, sister. Hey, Duke! A couple of people coming down the road. A man and a woman. Look like the owners of that Duesenberg. Okay, keep quiet when I get here. Right. It's all right out there. You can see plain in the moonlight. Kind of nice to look at, too. Now listen, pal. I've been letting you talk because it helps to pass the time. Well, I ain't gonna sit there and listen to you say things like that to an old man. I admit it, Duke. I was guilty of bad taste. I apologize. You better crawl or I might have to put the lug on you. I put him up! No, I got you. I've been waiting for this chance. I've been watching every move oh! you made. Oh! Get that gun! Give me that Tommy! He'll be all right. Double in the hand! I'll get brave, huh? Let us out of here. We didn't have anything to do with it. You shut up, lady. I won't have you poison. Don't me. see anything. Either. Both of you, dummy up! The harmless do. Get back to the car. Come on, sit down over there. Come on, step! Take him in the bedroom and bandage him up, sister. Better go with him, Jackie. Tie him up and leave him there. Why'd you have to fight this moment to come in? Come on, boss. I had my chance and I muffed it. I could have gotten mad here and then I'm good and I muffed it. Tough luck, 42. It's Ooh. a nice try. Say, hey, man, T, did you aim to hit him in the hand? Or was that just a bad shot? It was a bad shot, Pop, but I had to get it off fast. Now, listen. I let that mug make a mug out of me, but don't anybody try it again. Just remember that I and the boys are candidates for hanging. And the next time anybody makes a wrong move, I'm going to kill the whole lot of you. Just everybody keep that in mind. <laughs> didn't make all American he should have. What a gesture. What gallantry to prove his worth to his lady love he was willing to. Duke, would you mind passing me my rucksack? What do you want with it? I want to get out my life insurance policy. If you reach in there, you'll find it in a bundle of papers. What do you want with your insurance? Expecting to die? You'll find out, Mr. Maple. Can I take out my fountain pen? It's in here. Sure. Thank you. What, what are you going to do with my car? That's a nice bus you got there. Oh, are you going to restore it to me and my luggage? You're likely to get it back. Let's hope it won't be all full of bullet holes and blood. Uh, there's a small traveling case with some, some things I need. May I have it, please? I took a look in that case. You going to steal it? Yes, ma'am. I got a friend like Ruby's. You're a filthy thief. Yes, Mom. Look here, man. How much will you take to let us out of here? How much have you got? I could let you have, say, $200 in cash. Bring it here. Just put down the whole wallet. You got any more? Only some small change. Keep it. Now can we go? No. But I understood you to Sit say that... Sit down where you were. You're a cheap, contemptible, crooked thief. Be quiet, Edith. Oh, you be quiet. Why don't you ever do anything? Here's your wallet. Duke, I have a great favor to ask of you. Yeah? I don't think you'll refuse it because you're a man of imagination. You're not afraid to do rather outlandish things. What are you getting at? This insurance policy. It's my only asset. It's made out for $5,000 and it was made in favor of my wife. 
Well, she's a rich woman now, and she doesn't need that money. Besides, I know she doesn't want it from me. So I've written on the policy that I want the money paid to Miss Maple. That young lady in there bandaging the conquering hero's hand. If Mr. and Mrs. Chisholm will witness my signature, I'm sure it'll be all right. My wife had never contested. She's a good sort, really she is. What I'm getting at is this, Duke. After they've signed, I wish... I'd be much obliged if you'd just kill me. It couldn't make any difference to you, Duke. After all, if they catch you, they can hang you only once. And you know more than anyone else, they've already got more than they need against you. And you can't be bothered by any humane considerations. You'd have a hard time finding a more suitable candidate for extermination. I'll be mourned by no one. In fact, my passing will evoke sighs of relief in certain quarters. So you see, Duke, in killing me, you'll only be executing the sentence of the law. I mean natural law, survival of the fittest. I don't have to kill you to survive. That's a good objection. I'll do anything I can to eliminate it. I'll, uh, I'll attack you. I'll insult Mr. Maple here. Drunk as a cool. You're insane. Of course he's insane, but I for one rather like it. Having a fine time showing off, aren't you, pal? Of course I'm showing off. I'm trying to outdo bows. Oh, that's not it. You're in love with that girl, aren't you? Yes, I suppose I am. And not unreasonably. She has heroic stuff in her. She could be one of the immortal women of France, another Joan of Arc or George Sand or Madame Curie. And I want to show her that I believe in her. How else can I do it? Living, I'm worth nothing to her. Dead, I can buy her the tallest cathedrals, golden vineyards and dancing in the streets. One well-directed bullet will accomplish that. And it will gain a measure of reflected glory for him who fired it. And him who stopped it. This document will be my ticket to immortality. It'll inspire people to say of me, there was an artist who died before his time. Will you do it, Duke? I'll be glad to. That I can have this sign. Sure. Will you please sign where I've written witness this day? I refuse to be a part of anything that's going on in this room. Sign. I'm going to entrust this to you, Mr. Maple, and after I've... After the Duke's obliged, put it in the hands of some good lawyer for collection. My passport's here for identification purposes. Thank you very much. Let me know when you want to be killed. Take your own time, Duke. Say, just before you leave. But I'd prefer to have her think you did it in cold blood. Will you all please remember that? Okay, pal. But in the meantime, you better sit down. You might get to feeling reckless. I'm feeling reckless already. So I'll have another drink. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. You no, know I like you, Mrs. Chisholm. I bet you two have been thrilled by a tale of two cities. It's a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done before. It's a far, far better rest I go to. Well, be that as it may. Here's to you, Mrs. Chisholm. Here's to you, Duke. And to Gabrielle. It's good to be back again. Among the living. What do you think, Mr. Maple? Is it legal? Well, now... Kind of hard for me to make out what you wrote here. <clears throat> Eyes going back on me, you know. I used to be able to hit a running jackrabbit 50 spaces. Now, about the only thing I can see is the headlines in the newspapers. <clears throat> Maybe if I had a little drink, it might help. Hmm? I certainly am. Don't give it to him. The girl says he oughtn't to have it. I thought you were my friend. Maybe you better not, Mr. Maple. We've all got to keep clear heads for what's to come. Well, now, this thing seems legal, but uh, <clears throat> I'd like to tell you just one thing, my friend. What's that? There ain't a woman alive or ever did live that's worth $5,000. Let me tell you one thing. You're a forgetful old fool. Steady, pal. Let me finish, Duke. I think you'll agree with what I'm going to say. Any woman is worth everything any man has to give. Anguish, ecstasy, faith, jealousy, love, hatred, life or death. Don't you see that's the whole excuse for our existence? It's what makes the whole thing possible and tolerable. 
When you reach my age, you'll understand that, Mr. Maple. Did you hear that? I heard. Lovely girl, that granddaughter of yours. Do you know what she is? No, you don't have the remotest idea. What is she? She's the future. She's the renewal of vitality and courage. All the strength that's gone out of you. Now, I can't say what she is, but she's essential to me in the whole country, the whole miserable world. Hooray! Duke agrees with me, don't you, Duke? I couldn't say, pal. Permit me to speak for you. He could be over the border long ago and safe, but he prefers to stay here and risk his life. You know why? Why? Because he has a rendezvous here with a girl. Isn't that true, Duke? Yes, pal, that's it. Do you mean to say you ever have time for romance? Not much, lady. Of course he has, just like the knights of the round table between dragons. Well, I guess we're all a lot of saps, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was the champion. Did you think I was kidding when I said I'd be glad to knock you off? Well, I hope neither of us was kidding. Did you think I was? I just wanted to make sure. You gave me the idea, Duke, when you called me a low-grade louse. I take it back. You're all right, pal. You take a little getting used to, but you got good ideas. I'll try to fix it so they won't hurt. You're all right, too, Duke. I'd like to meet you again someday. Maybe it'll be soon. In that better rest you was talking about. He listens, a man who listens, but don't ever start thinking, Duke. Listen and act, but don't think or you'll be lost. You know, this frightful place has suddenly become quite cozy. It's my doing, Mrs. Chisholm. You ought to thank me for taking it out of the realms of reality. <laughs> I'm going to see something at last. And after that dreadful dull day looking at cliff dwellings, do you realize we're actually going to be witnesses at a murder? He's really going to shoot him. Quiet, Mrs. Chisholm. How's Bose? He'll be all right. You tie him up good? Yeah, the bet's all. When are we going to get out of here, Duke? we got to give him more time. You're not trusted there now. She's probably got lost down there in a panhandle. Horace knows this country like a book. Well, I wish she'd show. It's after 10 o'clock. We'll give him a few more minutes. A few minutes. Not so much more time, pal. Listen, Gramp. I've got an idea we ought to sell out right away. Tomorrow. It's the best chance we'll ever have. Because this place is going to get advertised all over the country, and people will be flocking here just to see where Duke Mantis stopped. Still aiming to take that trip to France? No. I'm asking you to do it for Dad's sake. Let him get located in Los Angeles. And maybe I'll find that rider with Warner Brothers. And maybe I'll get a job. Would you be content with that? I'm not thinking about myself. I don't care what happens to me. But you must think about yourself. You want to be a great painter, don't you? Then you've got to get used to the idea of being a colossal egoist, selfish to the core. Are you going to give me more advice? I thought you told me never to listen to you. I did, well, but I can't Well, that's all let the you... advice I'm going to take. Now, I'm going to tell you something, my dear. Please tell what do you this. know about me? I know what it means to repress yourself and starve yourself through what you conceive to be your duty to others. When I was just about your age, I went to Salzburg because I had a nervous breakdown after I came out. And I went to see a psychoanalyst there, and he told me I had every right to be an actress. But my family, of course, started yapping about my duty to them. And they whisked me back to Dayton to take my place in the Junior League and the Country Club and the DAR. And before I knew it, I was married to this pillar of the mortgage loan and trust. And what did he do? He took my soul and had it stenciled on a card and filed. Don't let them do that to you. Uh, Helen. You needn't look so martyred. I've been what you wanted, an ornamental cipher, at the cost of my individuality and my self-respect. At the cost of nothing. I suppose you've never come storming the office and created a scene just when I was training well, every my to paint your insane extravagance. Be quiet! Now perhaps you'll understand what I mean. Profit by my example. Perhaps you have something important to give the world. Go to France and find yourself. Suppose I learn there's nothing to find. That'd be better than endless doubt, which has been my portion. You know, something about this place that stimulates the autobiographical impulse. The kind of life you had, Duke. A rotten life. I don't believe it. Why not, lady? Because you at least have the supreme satisfaction of knowing that you're a real man. Yeah, that's true. But what has it got me? I spent most of my time since I grew up in jail, and it looks like I'm going to spend the rest of my life dead. So what good does it do me to be a real man when I don't get much time to spend in the back seat of a car with some dame? I wonder if we could find the back seat of a car around here. The love of heaven, Edith! 
There's nothing extravagant about that. I'm not asking for a whole car, just a back seat. <laughs> hey, what's going on around here, Duke? This is no time Thanks for... Thanks very much, lady. When I get settled in Mexico, maybe I'll send you a postcard with my address. Excuse me, Duke, but how's the time getting on? Just about up, pal. Gabrielle, I have to talk to you. Get your hands up! Keep up! Who's that? We got you covered by a machine gun. Open that door, Jackie. Come on, boys. Walk in the front door and keep your hands up. Cover the door, Jackie. I got it. Get those guns. Get them. Fire's okay out there? Yeah. That car on the way? No, it's a good mass, Duke. What's this? A stick up? What a guesser. What's that uniform you're wearing? The Ralph J. Kessler chapter of the American Sons of Liberty. And I'm the commander of this chapter, buddy, and I want to tell you that we fought in the Great War. You wouldn't shoot us down in cold blood? Sure we would. Sit down. Where? Down there! Why'd you come here? This is where I live. Why'd you bring the whole regiment with you? Well, we were training you. Looks like we caught up with you, too. Shut up, Commander. The less we talk, the better for all concerned. What made you think I'd be around here? Well, they caught your pal. Three men and a blonde. Don't try to get him out now, boss. Where was it? Come on, talk about shoot holes the yard wide in them pretty uniforms. They caught him in Buckhorn. Where's that? In New Mexico, 90 or 100 miles southeast of Route 11. When? I don't know. Well, we heard about it a half hour ago. Every man in this state is turned off. How'd they get him? It is the regular army. Your friends ran right into a troop of U.S. cavalry. I warn you, man. You better give yourself up. Get out of here the, the, for your own good. Anybody else coming this way? I don't know. Somebody I swear way. I don't, but this box is all around. I don't get the place all shot up. You got the whole mighty strength of this nation after you now, buddy. Listen, buddy. When we're got, it'll be by real cops, not by any overgrown boy scouts in fancy dress. All right, you can talk big if you want to, but that woman's been doing some talking. What's that? Star, she shut up. They always snitch. What were you saying? I warn you for your own good, Manti. They know where you're going. They're, they're, they're going to head you up. They're going to get you. Gee, that's this. Come on, Duke. Don't listen to them, Duke. Come on, boss, or we're all dead. The law's closing in on you. What's the matter with you, Duke? Let's move. Shut up. Shut up. Give me time to think. No, Duke, don't waste time thinking. That's not your game. Don't listen to what they're telling you. You got to keep going and going and going. Go fast. Come on. Come on, you're a double-crossing ditch. Next to be laid flat on a marble slab. Where'd they take her? I don't know. Oh, mister. Oh, well, maybe I'm a turkey. We head for there, they'll take us. You want revenge, don't you? You want to go out of your way again to get that blonde who snitched? Don't do it, Duke. Even if she did betray you, don't you commit a worse crime? Don't betray yourself. Go on, run for the border, take your illusions with you. Now he's right, Duke. I told you to shut up. They're going to get you anyway. You know that, Duke. You're obsolete, just like me. You got to die, then die for freedom. That's worth it. Don't give up your life for anything so cheap as revenge. Oh, there's a car coming, boss. We better land. All right, pal. I'm gone. Now, listen, folks, I've had a pleasant evening here, and I'd hate to spoil it with any killing at the finish. So everybody stay where they are till we're out of sight, because we'll be watching. You better cut that phone wire, Jackie, and pack up the ammunition. Wait a minute, you're not forgetting me. Car stopped out front, a guy with a rifle. Cops? Looks like it. Hicks or G's? Hicks, lay low. It's the sheriff. He's got you, man. I warned you, man. You better surrender. I'm a buddy. That's Poyle shooting. Oh, the jerk. Now we got to hole up in here and fight it out. You folks get down on the floor. Light on the floor, all of you. Where's that light switch? Right at the door. Turn them off, Jackie. And get back to the kitchen door. Hold your fire unless they try to rush it. They'll try to work around that way to the shadow of that mesa. It's their only cover. When they get around there, we'll land. Well, how many are there? Six or seven. Nothing to worry about. When enough of them get around back, give them a couple of bursts to scare them and then snap back here. And watch yourself, kid. Okay, Dukes. Stop that train. I'm not praying, I'm singing. Uh. Manti, you're not going to the rushes, are you? It'll be a massacre. Gabrielle, I have to talk to you. Can't you wait till they're gone? No. That's when they go, I go. I have to tell you now that I love you. Don't say that, Alan. Don't mean I it. tell you solemnly, I love you with all the heart that's left in me. Uh, You've got to believe it. You've got to remember it. It's my only chance of survival. I've told you about the major artist that's been hidden. I'm transferring him to you. You'll find a line in that verse of Villons that fits that, something about, thus in your field my seed of harvestry will thrive. I provided barren soil for that seed, but you'll give it fertility and growth and fruition. Um, will you please kiss me? Duke? I can't get a good angle on him, but they're drifting over. Get back to the kitchen door. Still think I didn't mean it? No, Alan. I just think you're kind of crazy, and I just so am I. 
That's why I think we'd be terrible. Say that, Gabrielle. Why not when I mean it with all my heart? Maybe you're right. Maybe we will be happy together in a funny kind of way. And if you're going away, I'm going with you, wherever it is. I'm not going away, Gabrielle, anyway. I don't have to go any further. I found the thing I was looking for. Here in the Valley of the Shadow. It almost restores in me the will to live and love and conquer. Alan, when you get to France, what do you see first? The customs offices. Well, that's the first real sight you see. The fields and forests of Normandy and then... What and then Paris. That's the most marvelous place in the world. All places are marvelous. Even here. Especially here, my darling. Okay, Ruby, we'll pull him out and get Jackie. Oh, Lord, now it's going to be all over. Not for us, no. Stay down, Alan. We're safe here. Safe? It's tempting, Gabrielle, to be safe, but we're not. The stars were right. There's no escape. Duke, Jackie got himself killed. Oh, now, how'd he do that? Well, we gotta leave him. You and you and you are coming up to hang on a running board. We gotta have shield. Me? All right, all right. I don't care what happens to me now. I don't care. You? No, not you, Pop. Well, don't ask a shot. Come on, get You won't get hurt to keep your hands up. Make plenty of noise. Come on, go. The rest of you stay where you are. Good night, folks. Duke! You still want it? It's no matter whether I want it, you've got to. Okay, pal. I'll be seeing you soon. Crap! Somebody help! It doesn't hurt. At least it doesn't seem. The one in this lung, I think. It's all right, Alan. It isn't all right, Gabrielle. I'm practically dead. No, Alan. You said you wanted to live. I know. And I live with you. I will. Death is funny looking when you... The Duke understood what it was I wanted. I hope you... What, Alan? What did you say? Alan! No, don't worry, Alan. I'm not going to be a crybaby. I know you died. Why? Why did you die? By gosh, she meant it. Why? He was a good guy at that. Here's the funny thing, Gabby. His life insurance policy had 5,000 berries. Made out to you, and it looked regular. Said he wanted you to spend it for a trip to France to see your mother. He did? Of course, I don't know if it's collectible or not, but I'll take it over to Winslow in the morning and find out. You'll bury him in the petrified forest. Yep. That's what he wanted. Thus in your field, my seeds of harvestry will thrive. For the fruit is like me that I set. Well, uh, guess I better go and untie bows. God bids me tend it with good husbandry. This is the end for which we twain are met. <laughs> 